Hi everyone, I'm Carol Gable, your host of Women in Business, where every week I get the opportunity to introduce you to some wonderful women in business. These are not women, however, that are climbing ladders, nor are they breaking ceilings. They are, however, smashing barriers to their success and paving the way to inspire all of you. So thanks for joining me, and thank you to my guest, Chaya Pamela. She is the president and CEO of PAM10. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Carol. So nice to be with you. It's wonderful to be with you, as always. Yes. So I know a lot about you. I know about the great work that you've done, that you continue to do. But I get the opportunity today to toot your horn a little bit and share it with all of the audience. So before we get into what you're doing right now, and some of your future plans, I thought we'd start with who inspired you to be the woman that you are that inspires all bi women in business, right? So what happened years ago? Like what were some of the, you know, who were the influencers and what were some of the circumstances? Well, I never um, thought that I would be at this place. <laughs> Uh, that was not part of the game plan. <laughs> but um, when you ask me about uh, inspiration, I would always take it back to my parents, especially my mom. Um, I always looked up to her, and uh, my mom wasn't a highly educated woman. She, um, edu she was educated until high school, and mm -hmm. then she had to take care of her siblings because her mom passed away when oh. she was a kid. And then she got married into a huge family, uh, when my father's family were there were 16 siblings of uh, my father. And, oh my uh, gosh, yeah. I didn't know, um, see, I found out something. Yeah, we should have been in Guinness book though. <laughs> 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 but uh, she took uh, a big responsibility as the eldest daughter-in-law in the family. So even though she wasn't educated, but I could see that subtle leadership quality in her. She could get the, all the reins together and really be able to run the family. Mm -hmm. And the way she managed the finances and the way she was able to manage the expectations of the family and still being able to have a, a great social profile. Um, that's something really attracted me and she was a great uh, mentor for me as a kid. Um, I learned a lot of different things, how to be really humble mm. and um, you know, rooted to the ground and at the same time being very, very, uh, um, you know, showing the empathy towards others and being able to share. Living in a big community like family, um, the first thing we learned was how to share. Of course. So we would share everything, literally everything. Uh, we never had our own beds, we would sleep on the floor. So it's, it's really the brought up that, and then looking at my mom and how she managed things. And um, my dad, who always um, was, is extremely smart, like same with my mom, but he was such a hard worker. I mean, everybody respected him at his work. And I even remember the days where people always kind of looked up to him and adored him and, um, you know, and uh, some people really admired his qualities. Mm. Um, so he, w he always worshipped work. He ne I never, re I don't remember uh, him going to temples and he, he never went to temples where my mother was, mother was completely opposite. She would pray to God every uh. day. Um, she would sit in front of the altar and offer her prayers. So both were different, but I think I learned different qualities from each mm -hmm. of them. And, um, uh, and more than that, you know, I believe you can't do uh, everything all alone. Mm. So with everything that I've done in my life, at every stage of my life, I've looked up to different people. And the way I have seen is um, every situation I'm in, I always have somebody in my mind mm -hmm. at the time. You know, if it were them, how would they address that situation? So if you ask me my mentors and people who have helped me, my role models, I've um, started to, uh, you know, read books um, and also listen to the videos. And you know, those days we didn't have mentors or, you know, people right. who would counsel you to <laughs> what career to take and what to do in life. And uh, according to our Indian family tradition, you know, a girl needs to, once she finishes her graduation, you know, uh, undergrad actually, ready to be married. So it's not so much of, uh, you know, career coaching that goes in there. So it was more, uh, you know, of a self push from my side. Mm. Um, the biggest reason I did was because I gave a promise to my mom. She took a promise from me before she left this world 
that I would be really independent because she was a homemaker after my dad was passed away and she was all alone. She felt that she, she could have been a little more educated and be able to manage things. Mm -hmm. So she always believed in women being independent and uh, she really took that promise from me. So that stayed with me and I constantly pushed myself and I must tell you, you know, in order for someone to be successful, you really need a strong support system. Oh, and I'm goodness, so yes. fortunate, so fortunate to have a family that supports me even prior to my marriage, you know, everything that I asked, even though, you know, I, I was almost like, you know, I need this. So even though people felt that, you know, you don't need to get educated further, you just get married. I still found my ways to navigate through the system and to find, uh, you know, some independency and uh, be able to educate myself. But I would say, you know, um, each thing that I do in my life, I have definitely role models, whether it's business or it's social work or anything that new things that I start bringing into my life. I go back to the children that I work with, they are my inspiration too. Mm -hmm. the, they from, talk from my about foundation, that. these children taught me how to, you know, look at an opportunity. Um, they, they would not leave a single opportunity. A lot of things we take them for granted in life, but they taught me how to really look at things from a brighter side and be more optimistic about life and be, still be happy with little things in life, right. not having to aspire for big things. So right. uh, I would say I'm so fortunate with everything that I get exposed to in a day. I learn from, a, from every moment of my experience. That's great. So I think your roots, you know, looking at your mom, you know, being more spiritual and your dad being very, having a great work ethic, you know, they instilled those values in you. And to this day, I think you have a great symbiotic uh, relationship with your spirituality and your work sure. ethic. So I think, that, you know, they were great first role models. But then as you went along, um, you became involved in um, pharmaceutical, right? That was your background, Bristol Myers Squibb, right? Right, right. Yeah. So that's an unusual field as well, you know. Um, so talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I was curious about learning uh, computers, um, and uh, this was around the time my family wanted me to get married after my undergrad, <laughs> <laughs> and I really wanted to join a computer programming course. And those days, it was a little expensive and the family felt that it's probably not needed and didn't want to spend that kind of money. So um, I, and I did my uh, postgraduate uh, program uh, and half the way I was like, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I somehow was so stuck up on doing some computer course. So that was the time, around that time I got married and uh, I told my husband that you know I wanna do something, I wanna learn and educate, educate it. And if you give me that freedom, I would be very happy. So I'm so fortunate. Married for 33 years, it still gives me that support. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I did my computer programming course uh, after I really after I got married, and then I also did my MBA um, when my daughter was one and a half year old. So MBA, <laughs> one and a half years old. Yes, and living in a joint family. So. It, it, so it was a bit challenging, but I think I was very determined to do these kind of things. And after I did my computer programming, I really developed a lot of interest in uh, computers because it's, it's always like sitting in front of some, you know, a, a computer writing a program, seeing the output. I think for me, what made a big difference was being able to bring something out of it. Right. I think the output was a, a, an interesting thing for me. Those days, I didn't know anything about STEM. I didn't even hear the word STEM in, when I was in school. Who knew what that, that right. was like part of a flower, right? <laughs> right. That, that, that nobody knew what it was. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean by STEM? And then try STEAM. Yeah. What's yeah. that, right? So that's how I uh, got interested into, in, in computers. Then I worked in India, and that's when actually my, uh, I met my business partner, Prasad Anjala. We used to work together, and that kind of evolved into a friendship. And um, we, uh, around that time, I got another opportunity in India to move to New Delhi. So I, I moved along with my husband. Okay. Um, actually, I followed him. Every time he found a new job, I followed my husband and found another job. <laughs> <laughs> so That's not an easy task either. It, it's it's not know? an easy task. The but moving and yeah. then, you know. Yeah. But we both be believe in that law of attraction, right? Me too, so yes. we can speak for hours. But mm -hmm. that's something that acted uh, in my life. I mean, that's what really worked for me. I always, you know, looked at a building. I want to work in that uh, company. 
you manifest I'll find it. a job. I yeah, manifest, manifest it. it. So that's how I worked there. And then I, we got the opportunity to move to um, United States. So we both moved uh, here, and then uh, I joined Bristol Myers Squibb, which is a pharmaceutical company. Uh, almost 15 years, that was a journey wow. with them. So then, from there, though, it got a little magical, right? Yes. Um, so, I think uh, you know what I love about this country is the amount of opportunities. You know, um, I prob I wasn't exposed to those many opportunities when mm -hmm. I was back in India. One, because of my family situation, but two, as women, we don't really get that kind of awareness or you know, exposure to mm -hmm. opportunities. So when I came to this country, there was a bit of a lot more independency for me, and there's a lot more opportunities around me. I just felt like there's no limitation. I don't have to limit myself. There is so much out there. I can go for it. So that's how I started to you know, kind of open up and look for opportunities around me. And that was a time it just really hit me really hard um, that I have this whole ambition of helping children because I lost my parents at an early age. I was a teenager. It's the most critical horrible. phase of life. It is. It's terrible. Yeah, you want someone to be really close to you, be able to you know, express yourself, share. Guide you. Uh, and guide you especially. And that whole security. I felt a little bit empty and being lost and insecure in my teenage. I look back in my teenage, I'm like, I was not at all confident. I was very naive. And so I always grew up with the ambition to help underprivileged children, especially children who don't have the kind of support I had. Right. So once I went there and um, I came to Bristol Myers Squibb, that was the time when I was settling down. I said, I need to do something. So I'm going to stop you right there because that's the most magical part of this whole interview. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what happened. So stay tuned. A quick 15 minutes. Shelter dogs aren't broken. Everyone, as I said, this is the magical part. So I have had the distinct privilege of, of being in India at Sopkin, where these amazing children are, and you are like the grand mama <laughs> of all of them. And it is just such an amazing thing to witness. So talk about Sopkin. Yeah, so um, when I was in Bristol Myers Squibb, I uh, was somehow, I got a kick, and in their call they say, you know, just go and do, we've been thinking about it. So that's when I went to India, I actually resigned my job, and I went to India uh, to look at the organizations that do similar work to start. And I came across a wonderful organization called Maher in Pune in India, mm. and I adopted that model uh, where I've seen the children extremely happy, and that's what I wanted to see. And the uniqueness I wanted to bring is, apart from providing basic amenities to these children, like education, medical help, and uh, ba you know, basic clothing, food, and shelter, I wanted to give them a lot more care and nurture and give a family atmosphere so they feel a lot more secure. And also, the hidden talent kind of starts to surface. And that was the whole idea of Softkin. That's how we created. So we have these. Um, so I established Softkin in 2006 and started with three children. Now Softkin is supporting 100 plus children. And um, these children, uh, we bring them into like small homes. So there are 15 to 20 children in each home. And uh, the caretakers are amazingly are also the women that we bring from the streets. Um, and uh, these women who do not have a support in the family and uh, we bring them, provide them shelter, and give them rehab, medical attention, everything through our partner organization, Maher. Mm. And we give them these uh, caretaker positions. And some of them get trained, and uh, they even join our administrative staff. They get paid, and they feel self-sustained. You know, that's, that's just the, amazing. Yeah. So you know, we talked in the beginning about inspiration, and you know, with women in business, Sister Lucy was, you know, your inspiration. She's right? one of my role model, especially in this work, um, and uh, she's almost like Mother Teresa to me. And uh, you met her. I have. <clears throat> so looking at Sister Lucy, and I feel that what I'm doing is very little, uh, but there is so much that I learned from her, mm -hmm. um, from her leadership especially, and uh, having a nonprofit and for profit, having different types of leadership styles. That was an amazing, tr uh, you know, thing that I learned throughout this journey. That's crazy. You know, most people, a nonprofit is hard enough, but you have a for-profit, Pam 10, and all the time you you're asked, Pam 10, where does that come from, and what does that mean? 
It's funny, um, you asked that question because many people asked us, in fact, we use that as an icebreaker. <laughs> when the people hear about our company, they're like, what, what, what do you mean by FAM10? So when we wanted to name the company, me and Prasad, uh, we, we felt, you know, let's make it easy. You know, we'll combine our last names. So my last name is Pomula and his last name is Tenjerla, so we made it as FAM10. I love it, it's great. <laughs> And let's talk about PAM10, you know, so it is difficult juggling nonprofit, for profit, but you, you're very creative, you know, I know the whole company has creative minds and your solution providers, you know, which I just love about your company. So talk a little bit about PAM10 and some of the services, you know, that, that you're in love with and that, you know, you have a passion for. Yeah, sure. PAM10, um, specifically, we started off developing websites for small businesses, but we evolved into providing more custom, complex, custom software solutions to our clients. And we also offer staffing solutions, staff mm -hmm. augmentation, and uh, we uh, moved into even offering some software products because we have the capacity of having resources, working on different client projects. At the same time, we also have a solutions development center. We have two development centers in India and uh, we have presence in New Jersey, New York, and Toronto, Canada. So we are about 180 employees. We've grown in the past uh, last 12 years uh, organically. Mm -hmm. uh, but the services that we provide and the capacity and the capabilities we have in our resources enabled us to start focusing on some product development. So we, we have a few products, but I would like to name one product, which is my favorite. Uh, it's Connect Pro Global. Which I love as well. <laughs> you, you know about it as well. So I used to be very shy about networking. So this really triggered this thought about wh why don't we have a platform that will allow people to kind of know each other and build that you know, relationship. And uh, it's almost like an icebreaker before you go to a networking event. And I had trouble talking to strangers or people that I didn't know. Um, so this, this platform helps everybody to kind of network, collaborate, and there's a member management, event management. There's also matchmaking. So like, you know, it tells Carol, you have these interests, you have professional skills. These are the people that match your skills. You may want to talk to them, starts giving you some suggestions. So there are a lot of other features like job board, you can uh, place job uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. So with, with this platform, now we are able to offer this to uh, chambers, associations, some NGOs are using it. Uh, Girl, Scou Girl Scouts uh, Greater New York City is using it. So we are very excited. And we have a long uh, roadmap for the product. We're excited to include some AI features in future as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a wonderful product that you're able to really um, cherish the growth of the product yeah. along with that. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice baby. Yes, nice it's, it's, it's a baby, to. yeah. But there's another product that you're really excited about as well. So SheTech, right? Yes, SheTech is a, an initiative of PAM10, uh, primarily because um, as, the, as a company, when we are growing, uh, we open up positions, and uh, it was very hard to see women applying for those mm -hmm. positions. So I could see only few resumes coming from women, uh, mostly from men. Um, and it uh, created some you know, curiosity to see what's happening in the industry, why not many women are applying. I thought it's only me who doesn't know what is STEM and you know, not having right. enough guidance. I, I took on this career late in my life, but it's, not, it's the same problem everywhere. Yeah. So I realized a lot of women are not coming forward to take on STEM-related uh, programs or taking those career options. So that's uh, where uh, we felt that there's a large need to create that workforce and create that pipeline of talented women in technology. So that's mm -hmm. how we created SheTech. So the objectives of SheTech are primarily to prepare women more job preparedness, you know, to, to give them to corporates. And even corporates have their internal goals and objectives to, uh, around diversity and, uh, and uh, gender um, you know, e equality. Right. Um, so right. to help them meet their goals, we thought that the best thing we could do is to fill the pipeline of these women with their talent. So we're working with, you know, we can't do it all alone. So we are partnering with uh, universities, corporations, 
and we are also trying to bring create a community. Mm -hmm. You know, we just talked about ConnectPro uh, platform, so we're using the same platform to create SheTech community where all these people can be part of that community. Mm -hmm. So we understand each other's requirements and it's much more easier to get to those resources that you need and to fill those positions. Mm -hmm. So um, the community is getting created and we're very excited. We have a cybersecurity workshop coming up for uh, women business owners. Uh, because most women are also intimidated by technology. Right. While we are trying to prepare the workforce, we also felt there is a need to uh, help women business owners to kind of remove that barrier of, uh, you know, that intimidation with technology. Yeah. So we could train them and upgrade, uh, tell them to upgrade their skills and uh, also help them with these services. Yeah, you know, we often think it's generational. You know, certain generations did not grow up with computers, yeah. right? But I think there are the younger women also perhaps aren't choosing this direction from what I'm hearing from you, right? Yeah, yeah, because um, you, you see in high, up to high school, the schools are promoting STEM programs and everything. But uh, you, as you rightly said, there, there, are, there are no moms at home or people at home to tell you, you know, hey, go and take up that program because there is no guidance or career counseling at home or around you. So until we bridge that gap, I think it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Well, I, I think our audience would really love to know more about SheTech and about um, what you're working on. So I would love for you to um, let the audience know where they could find you, um, SheTech, Pam10 as well, you know, if you can give them information as far as the website and the phone number, um, that would be great so they could take advantage of it. Sure. Um, so Pam10, it is Pam10, P-A-M-T-E-N.com. And uh, you can reach us at contact at pamten.com. And SheTech website is SheTech, S-H-E-T-E-K. It's not C-H, S-H-E-T-E-K dot net. So you will know a lot of information about SheTech. And there is an option for you to join the community. And I welcome all the women listeners to please join the community. By the way, we are inclusive of men too. So if you are interested in helping and supporting women, please do register on SheTech.net. Excellent, that's just great. And before we say goodbye, um, let, let the audience know, you know, give them an inspirational thought, you know, as far as your journey and for those that are thinking, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, you mentioned before about America, you know, allowing you so many opportunities, you know, just some final words for some women that have, you know, some fears about opportunity. Sure. I think in my case, in my experience, I, uh, the not having the knowledge was like a blessing in disguise. I was, you know, sometimes too naive to make those bold steps right. and realizing the challenges around it and having to deal with them at a later point. And uh, if you ask me, my advice would be, uh, we fear about so many things and we limit ourselves. It's important to believe in ourselves and then make that one simple first bold step. The moment we take that step, if a lot of things open up and I feel y you it's know like it dancing. very well <laughs> right so you believe in yourself and you ask for it the universe will respond to you and that's exactly what's been happening to me and I, I advise everyone to do the same believe in themselves thank you so much thanks Carol keep twinkling sure <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all of you for joining me on women in business it's my pleasure and I look forward to seeing you again next Friday so till then uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.